The key to success in working with millimoles is having a really good understanding of molarity. Millimoles. Now what you have to remember is that liters times moles per liter, that's molarity, is equal to moles. So milliliters times moles per liter, liters cancel with liters, leaves you with millimoles. Or if you will, milliliters times moles per liter is millimoles. It's very simple, folks. You just take the milliliters, multiply it by the concentration, and you've got the number of millimoles you're dealing with. Therefore, molarity is equal to millimoles over milliliters. Look, your millis cancel. So molarity is either moles per liter or it's millimoles per milliliter. Now, it, don't make it complex because it isn't. Now here is a problem that gives students gray hairs from the beginning of time. But if you work it in millimoles, it's really kind of easy. You have 150 milliliters of a 0.1 molar lead nitrate solution. And it was added to 90 milliliters of a 0.140 molar potassium iodide solution. Let's find the concentration of all ions remaining after the reaction occurs and the mass of the precipitate formed. Well, we start out by writing a total ionic equation. A total ionic equation is necessary. Here we go. We have lead ion plus nitrate ion plus potassium ion plus iodide ion, giving us lead iodide precipitate plus potassium ion plus nitrate ion. Notice I did not balance the equation. You can balance it if you want to, but do not let the prefixes for each one of those values foul you up in your calculations. This is why I use no prefixes at all in this. I use no balancing factors. Let's start out by noting all the reactant concentrations. Well, we start out with 150 milliliters of lead ion and a nitrate ion solution, 150 milliliters times 0.1 molar. I haven't said yet what the concentration of the lead ion is, and I haven't said yet what the concentration of the nitrate ion is. I'm just making note of the volume and concentration of the solution I started out with. For the potassium iodide, we have 90 milliliters of a 0.14 molar solution. Now, let's convert everything to millimoles and find out how many millimoles of each one of those ions that we happen to have. We have 150 milliliters times 0.1, milli, uh, times 0.1 moles per liter tells us that we have 15 millimoles of lead. Well, folks, the formula of the material that was dissolved was Pb and O3 taken twice. So if we have 15 millimoles of lead ion at the instant before reaction occurs, how much nitrate ion do we have? And the answer is we have 30 millimoles. We have 30 millimoles. And do you understand that? Because a PB and O3 taken twice breaks down to give us one PB and two NO3 ions. Okay. Now let's look at the potassium iodide. We have 90 milliliters times 0.140 molar. Well, multiplying that out, we find that we have 12.6 millimoles of potassium. But it's Ki is the formula, so we also have 12.6 millimoles of iodide ion. Got that? Now what reacts? Well, the lead ion reacts with the iodide ion to form a precipitate, PBI2. Notice it's one lead ion to two iodide ions. That's right, one lead ion to two iodide ions. So what we're dealing with, folks, is a limiting reagent problem. And what is the limiting reagent that we have to look at here? Why, it's the iodide ion. We're going to run out of iodide ion before we run out of lead ion. 
As a matter of fact, we're going to run out of it a long time before we run out of the lead ion, aren't we? Here we go. We have 12.6 millimoles of iodide ion, and it's going to react with the lead ion on a 1 to 2 mole ratio. 1 mole of lead ion to 2 moles of iodide ion means then that what we're going to do is consume. We're going to consume 6.3 millimoles of lead ion for the 12.6 millimoles of iodide ion that reacts. So we subtract our 6.3 millimoles of lead ion from the amount that we have and that leaves us with 8.7 millimoles of lead ion still running around in solution. We consumed all 12.6 millimoles of our limiting reagent, so that leaves us with no iodide ion at all. How much of each ion then remains? Well, we have 8.7 millimoles of lead ion. The nitrate ion was a spectator. It didn't react. It just sat up in the bleachers and watched the goings-on. So there are 30 millimoles of the nitrate ion. Potassium ion was also a spectator ion. So there are 12.6 millimoles of the potassium ion. And the iodide, there is none remaining of the iodide ion in this mythical world of of make-believe that we live in. Actually, there are probably a few of them running around, but not enough for us to count. To summarize, then, we have the concentration of the lead ion, or the amount of lead ion that we have is 8.7 millimoles. The amount of nitrate that we have is 30 millimoles. The amount of potassium is 12.6 millimoles. And the amount of iodide ion is zero. Now, it's important that you look at the positive and negative charges here to make sure you haven't screwed up somewhere because the positive charges and the negative charges have to equal zero. So look at this. The lead ion, 8.7 millimoles of lead ion in solution, but this has a charge of plus two. So that is how many? Well, let's see. The 8.7 millimoles of lead ion times 2 is going to be 17.4 millimoles there. And the potassium ion is 12.6. And you add the 17.4 and the 12.6 together, and you get 30 millimoles of positive charge. Now, how much negative charge do you have? Well, the only thing that you have with a negative charge running around is nitrate. The nitrate ion, 30 millimoles of it, then is going to give you negative charge to the tune of 30 millimoles. So you can bet then that you're probably right on the numbers of millimoles of each material that you have. Now let's convert from millimoles to molarity. First find the total volume. And what is it? It's 90 milliliters plus 150 milliliters is probably right at about 240 milliliters, give or take a tiny bit. But it's going to be right at about 240 milliliters. Now, how do you convert from millimoles to molarity? Oh, surely you remember. Take, for example, your lead, 8.7 millimoles divided by 240 milliliters tells me that I have a solution that is 0 0.036 molar in lead ion. For the nitrate, I have 30 millimoles divided by 240 milliliters is giving me a concentration of 0 0.083 molar in nitrate ion. The potassium, well, it's 12.6 millimoles over 240 milliliters, tells me I have a solution that is 0 0.053 molar in potassium ion. And the iodide ion, well, it's zero. Now, let's find the mass of the lead iodide, the plumbus iodide precipitate that was formed. You used up 6.3 millimoles of lead to form the precipitate. Therefore, you form, since it's a one-to-one -one ratio now, 
of that PBI2 to PB plus 2. Therefore, we must have formed 6.3 millimoles of lead iodide. 6.3 millimoles times 1 mole over 10 to the third millimoles times 461 grams per mole. Oh, I believe we produced 2.9 grams of lead iodide. Brought to you by the Chemistry Professor, offering complete courses in chemistry on DVD. Visit us at our website at www.chemistryprofessor.com.